Welcome to Rock the Crown. Introducing our host. Nafisa, queen about her business in 60. Host Naima, queen get it done and fitness guru. Host Nefertari, queen residential redeveloper and creative director. Boss Queen Biz and Youth Motivator. All right, Crown Nation, let's get it. Season two, Rock the Crown. Welcome, Crown Nation. I'm your host, Nafisa Fudayil. Today, for our season two, third episode, so sexy. I have to welcome in my co-host because it's going to get hot in here. <laughs> Who's here with us today? I'm Naima. I'm Daia. And I'm Nefertari. Yes, it's going to get hot in here. And this is a grown folks conversation. Grown so if you got some children, some children, some minors, you need to go to a different room because we're we about to get grown up in here, okay? So I'm just letting y'all know we're about to do some so sexy. And you might say, Nafisa, what's so sexy? What's that term? What does it mean? Well, it's a term I came up with, right? It's called soul sexing. What is soul sexing? Soul sexing is the union of two mates, male and female, together in a sexual experience where they become one, their souls become one. It's mm -hmm. an elevated social experience, spiritual experience. And the need that I had to uh, talk about this topic was because we're in a hyper sexual atmosphere. I mean, all the music is super hypersexual. A lot of videos are super, you know, hypersexual. It's all this elevated hypersexual energy that's mm -hmm. in the environment. And right. most of it is focused from an animalistic perspective. Most mm -hmm. of it is focused at the very beast level. Like that's the only way to have this experience or that's the best way to have this experience. I mean, we've lost the art of love making, the art of soul sexing, of uniting not just our bodies together, right? But our spirits together. When we yeah. do this experience, it's us becoming one soul. It's two souls becoming together. It's not just a physical exchange that ends up in some physical fluids being dispersed, okay? So soul sexing is about elevating this experience with your mates. So we're gonna give you some good tips today. We're gonna to talk about from, you have to know your body. So we're gonna talk about it from a biological standpoint. You need to check your attitude. We're gonna talk about it from a mental standpoint. We got to activate them senses. Yes. So we're gonna to touch on the five senses and you got to close it out with the spiritual. Right? Because yeah. it has to be that spiritual soul experience or you ain't doing it right. And I can mm -hmm. tell you that. Okay? <laughs> All right. So to get started, we got to know our bodies. We got to know what we're working with. So we're going to hand it over to Naima, who's going to let us know about our bodies. Hey. <laughs> All right. So starting it off again with our bodies and remembering that this is for mature audiences only okay so the physical body between two people we're talking physically about a woman's physical body and a male's physical body and if you remember when you were in middle school high school 
hopefully in college, some biological things that happen with the body is that both the male and female have similar parts. They just look really, really different. So we wanna start with the head. You know, we all have eyes, nose, mouth, ears. We also have necks, right? And going down to the breast area, both male and female have senses inside of the chest area, going down to the stomach, both male and females have senses in the stomach area, pass down to the belly button, and also to the private parts. Pass the private parts into the legs, outer, inner thigh. Male and female have sensory modes there. The knees, both the front and the back of the knee, that probably some of you didn't even know anything about that, right? But then <laughs> past the knees going also into the lower region of the leg, into the ankles some of you know about those ankles and as well as the feet so when we start thinking about these body parts thinking about both male and female everybody has different types of body um stimulations but mm -hmm. guess what if you don't know what you like how do you expect somebody else to know what you like right so we want to make sure that you understand your physical body some of the same parts that make a woman kind of reach her peak are also the same exact parts that make a male reach his peak as well. It's just shaped a little bit different, right? So I wanna talk to you about the physical uh, side of the, of the body from the muscular, the muscular area. So when you start talking about what, what physical and muscular, what does that mean? Well, the muscular tissue is what you're physically laying on when you're with each other. So these are my muscles, right? Mm, 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 right? <laughs> and so men have physical muscles in their chest, in their arms, in their back, and women have those same muscles as well as in your legs. And when you are coming together, those muscles need to work, right? Because <laughs> you might have to be doing some lifting. You might have to be doing some sitting back. And have you ever tried to sit back and your stomach isn't working? <laughs> <laughs> and you start quivering and stuff. Is, that's muscle tissue, right? So then you start thinking about physically, if a man has to lift a woman up, have you ever been dropped? Right, that's because the muscles are not working, right? So a man having to hold a woman up, because I don't think women are holding up men, but if a man has to hold a woman up, he has to have the muscles to do that. That is very, very important. And the muscles need oxygen so it's important that even during the physical act that you are breathing sometimes people when they're doing physical acts they have a tendency to stop breathing right mm -hmm. what ends up happening is the body begins to get tense no wonder you can't hold it uh, hold anything because you're not breathing through that process it's okay to breathe on each other that's why we're going to talk about the five senses later and what the breathing and the smell and all of that does during the physical act but making sure that your mm -hmm. muscular is intact so guess what that means you need to do what exercise back to exercise making sure that you are regularly we're not talking about strenuous exercise we're just talking about the basic exercise of stretching your body every single day let's do some stretches mm, mm. this is this is exercise right just some basic stretching because when you have to be able to move those arms, have you ever been in a physical act with somebody and you got a cramp? Right, and so when you get that cramp, what is the body saying? I don't have enough oxygen. I don't have enough water. I'm dried out and you want me to work for you. No, so we need to make sure that we understand the muscular side of your body and his body our body is a woman and male's bodies, right? We also wanna go into the cardiovascular side. Now this is really, really important because this is where a lot of things are flowing and people don't understand the flow of the cardiovascular. Right. So let's start from the top. Blood circulation. Right. Blood circulation. We're gonna start from the top though because when you are having an, an, a relationship, physical body relationship, what's working? the brain, right? The brain needs blood flow. So if you 
or if and when you are having this process, the blood is going to the brain. What's starting to happen? Ooh, wee. All of that good stuff is happening in the brain, right? Mm -hmm. So you have your serotonin going on, right? And then you got your endorphins working, right? And your oxytocins are going on. So all of this is happening. And guess what? The brain is happy. Mm -hmm. And did you know that infrequent sex, infrequent sex increases brain dysfunction, right? So mm -hmm. when you have blood flowing in the brain, you want to know why people are unhappy as they get older. They have a tendency to reduce the amount of sex that they're having. You can tell people who are having really nice, continued sexual experiences because they always seem happy. There is no one that is not having sex. That is, you know, if they're not having sex, they're not smiling. <laughs> because it goes with the endorphins, like happiness and all of that stuff, right? You can't be having an experience, like your whole body experience, and then taking some aspects of those body experiences out. So thinking about the brain. After the brain, what do we go to? We're going to go to the heart. How many people have you heard of, of having heart attacks? Heart attacks during the act because the heart has to pump heavily, right? But we want to make sure that we have the proper amount of blood circulation going through the heart so that if it's happening regularly, it's hard to get those clogged arteries, right? Because the blood is constantly flowing. But if blood sits down for six months, whole two years, three years, the, then the blood vessels get small. And so all of this has a lot to do with circulation, thinking about the blood flow and everything. Now, mm -hmm. after we go to the heart, we're going to start going into the actual physical uh, extreme, these lower parts where everything is flowing. So we, we're going to have to say the bad words people don't want to hear. Erectile dysfunction. Okay. <laughs> that is both male and female. So women's blood flows, as we said, is the same as men's blood flow. The body parts are the same. They just look different. So if you un understand or don't understand that those body parts have to have blood flowing through them in order for them to, to reach the peak, right? But if something doesn't happen or something's not working right, or it's taking too long for that area to get blood to it, you need to see a doctor. Let's stop being afraid to say that our body isn't working properly. Your body needs to work properly in order for you to get the highest satisfaction. Prostate cancer is no joke. Okay, let's say that again. Prostate cancer is no joke. And did you know that even if you're going through prostate cancer, after you've gone through the whole, you know, getting chemical, whatever, what is that, radiation and all of this stuff, you know what they encourage you to do? To have sex. That's mm. the real deal. They encourage you to have sex. Right. Women's bodies, when you have fibroids and all of that other stuff, they take trying to take stuff out. You need to be having sex regularly for the circulation to be happening in that specific area of your body. Right. Right. so that your body doesn't break down, okay? So this right. is very important. Then also thinking about your kidneys. Kidney needs blood flow. This happens all during the sexual act. Your muscles, your kidneys, your brain, blood vessels, your heart, all of that is going on and on and on. And don't forget that each one of these body parts requires a certain amount of blood in order to function properly. If you don't know your body, meaning that when you touch yourself, that's what? We're going into the nervous system, right? So, you know, when somebody walks up behind you and they touch you on the neck, you're like, oh, 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 wait now. <laughs> you might get in trouble, right? <laughs> the nervous system starts to uh, activate. And the nervous system is really what sends signals to the brain saying, bye -bye, right? <laughs> and so we have all of these explosions happening, right? But if you have never explored touching and understanding your own body, how can someone else do that? And we have to also think about making sure that we understand that the erogenous zones of the body, it's not five, 10, 15, it's thousands of erogenous zones in the body, but you have to be in tune with your own physical body 
Mm -hmm. in order for someone else to be able to trigger those spots so that you can tell them what you like and what's pleasurable. And then as you're exploring each other's body, this leads to uh, foreplay. So thinking about the physical body beginning with foreplay into the sexual act and mm -hmm. then moving into the physical act. No and one wants to mouth what, work Naima? without a saddle. Um, <laughs> Naima, also too, um, when you're talking about um, the the circulation and knowing your erogenous zones, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone doing it by themselves. You can do that with your partner. You can make it a game with it. Right. You know, oh, I'm going to touch you. Okay, what does that feel like? What does it Oh, that's your spot. Oh, that's another spot. Oh, that's another right. spot. I mean, you can make it fun. Mm -hmm. uh, with your partner, with your mate. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to, I don't want people to feel like our audience to feel like, oh, I got to go do all this stuff to the seven, and then I can go present it to my mate. No, some of us you can get engaged with in discovery. That makes it fun mm -hmm. with your mate. Discover these different erotic zones that you have and he have, and y'all, y'all can make that fun and do that together. Just you can. And do Doing that together and exploring, you really have to be in a good, good place mentally, mm -hmm. right? And you have to be open to the mental connection that happens when you're exploring the physical body. And Daiya is going to talk to us about the mental connection <laughs> of soul sexing. Yes, yes. Well, thank you, Naima, for that overview of the physical body and how the body works and how the body actually gets going. Um, when, you, when you think about male and female interaction, usually, you know, there's that first attraction, right? So first, you have to be attracted to that person, you know, their mm -hmm. body, you know, has to kind of stimulate you. But then there's also the mental stimulation, you know, it's also, you know, this person reaching your mind and this person really stimulating your mind, you know, in ways that maybe another person cannot. So um, a lot of times we kind of separate, you know, the physical aspect of sex from the mental aspect, from the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. So what soul sexing attempts to do is that it merges all of those areas together. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because like Nafisa said in the introduction, you know, that our, our society is very over-sexual. Mm -hmm. right but it's all in a physical animalistic way you know it's just body to body you mm -hmm. know and that's why we have so much promiscuity because people are just thinking about bodies Ooh, i see a nice body you know i want you know i want to conquer that body so we kind of just have bodies kind of meeting it's just bodies meeting mm -hmm. and it's never a meeting of the the mind and the soul and then the body that then makes that 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 closer connection right mm -hmm. it makes more of a bond right? It bonds them together. If right. you just have two people who are sexually attracted to each other, sex will only last for a little while, right? right. right. Because if you're not together mentally, that person's going to start to get on your nerves. If you're not together spiritually, then you're, you're going to have that disconnect. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of them have to be in line in order for you to be able to achieve, you know, this soul sexing type of relationship, right? That we're hoping that we can all have with our mates. Um, so when we're talking about the mental aspect of it, you know, sometimes you, you've heard it before. I'm just not in the mood, right? I'm just not in the mood. Like sometimes we've just had a horrible day, right? We've just come home. We're stressed out, you know, to the max and, you know, our, our, our mate approaches us, you know, but because of the mental state that we're in, we're not able to really get our body. Your brain connects with your body, right? Right. right. Your brain tells your body, you know, hey, you know, um, I need sleep. So that's when your muscles start to get weak and you start to want to just relax. Mm -hmm. And then also your brain tells your body, hey, um, you know, I'm looking at my spouse, you know, you know, he's out there working hard. I see a little sweat dripping on his face, you know, so that mental, that mind is going to then send some energy down that way, you know, right. right? Mm -hmm. Send some energy mm -hmm. down that way to kind of, hey, get that area ready, you know, because right. I'm, I'm thinking I'm feeling some energy from my mate, you right. know, so, um, but if Getting you're not... Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get, get ready. 
<laughs> right? So, um, so, so if your mental is not in a good space, and this is for both men and women, mm -hmm. you know, right? Sometimes the men are just not in the mood, right? Sometimes say, not there yeah, often. Say that again, right? But, but say it you though, know, because uh, we have in society. I just want to clear something up that yeah. in society we tend to think that men are, you know, the only ones who think about sex, right? You know, they're the only ones, you know, even though it is the studies show that men do think about it more often but mm -hmm. women also you <laughs> right. know we also have we're sexual beings right. you know a lot made us both sexual beings mm -hmm. um so but there are times when the man may not be in the mood you know, right. where it just may be too much on his mind, you know, but sometimes the men work differently to where when things are on their mind, you know, that sex tends to help to release a lot of stress. It does the same thing for women. So I think using, you know, um, you know, aligning our mental states, you know, with the right person, number one, and then trying to stay aligned with our mate, you know, helps us to have better sexual, you know, better sexual energy. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's like a stimulating conversation, you know, sometimes even like debates, healthy debates, you know, tend to also stimulate, you know, a little bit of, of sexual um, arousal. Mm -hmm. when you're you know having those conversations those in-depth conversations right. with your mate mm -hmm. um but then just also i want to mention and we always try to you know this is something that's near and dear to my heart is talking about mental illness mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so um you know when you have you know a spouse whether it's a male or a female who's dealing with a mental illness you know that has to that has to be taken into consideration and that has to really be um addressed Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times when people are facing depression or anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, their bodies shut down in that way to where they're mm -hmm. not able to really give you, you know, any type of sexual, you know, there's no interest there, you know, so right. that happens a lot. And a lot of times we take it personal. We think, oh, my, my spouse is not interested in me when really it's this depression that they're fighting that is causing them to lose interest. They lose interest in, in, in having. And you know what I meant to mm -hmm. tell you about depression also goes back to the brain. Mm -hmm. So when there's not proper blood flow in the brain, meaning the happy endorphins, that also is why they can't mm -hmm. get anything up or mm -hmm. anything, you know, activated. And also remembering that even if you're with someone who's going through like the mental mm -hmm. uh, aspect of it and someone can physically have an orgasm, but that doesn't mean that they, it was a pleasurable experience. So the body has one mm -hmm. reaction mm -hmm. and then the mind has another. And what we're talking about with soul sexing is that these are intertwined things because right. unfortunately, like even if someone, and I am going to use this example, if someone is raped, mm -hmm. their body physically may register that they felt pleased. But if their mm -hmm. mental state is not there, that's what really plagues the individual like you they were like oh we, I, you you liked it no i didn't like it my body <laughs> registered it but physically i mean mentally i wasn't there and that's really what is also an issue with the mental state of the of the um of, of the having the, mm -hmm. the sexual act as you yes. say yeah mm -hmm. and also too i want to make a distinction and say that um you know the way that you approach your mate because a lot of times people think of, you know, sexing as, um, you know, you know, I want your body, you know, you want my body. Oh, let's get, you know, and then even when we're in, in their act, we're thinking like, oh, I want to make this person's body feel good. But what about approaching mm -hmm. it from the sense of, you know, I want to make love to your soul. And I'm just using your body as a vehicle, as a vessel to do that. Right. You see what I'm saying? That approach is a little bit different than, oh, we just, you know, let me just physically touch you here so they can get this reaction, a physical touch you there. No, right. I'm making love to your soul. I want our souls to unite in this, in this union, in this experience. You know, that is a mental approach that you set up in the way that you, you even approach the whole situation. So that's just something right. to think about that people don't normally think about. It's a heightened, elevated level of thinking and approaching the whole experience. I'm making love to your soul, baby. You mm -hmm. know, your, your body, that's just a, that's just a vehicle I'm reach. using, right? That's just a vehicle reach. I'm using to arouse you. Right, you know right, saying? right. So that's, that's another aspect to think about it in terms of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 
know we want to move on. Daia, did you have any last closing remarks on that particular section of our mental state and checking our attitudes? Um, I did not, you know, just like I said, just really, you know, assess your mental state and just know that it's all in line. You know, it has right. to, you, you want the, for all of them to kind of come together, fuse together. Fuse together, right. right. That was great. That was great. Yeah. So now let's move into the juiciness of it. Our five senses, activating <laughs> our five senses for right. this elevated experience. And right. what I want to say on this, like we might give different tips here and there about it. But when you are, when you approach it from, from an openness, relax, I'm connecting with your soul, you're connecting with my soul type of, type of experience, it also opens up your creativity, right? Mm -hmm. So when people talk about they're getting bored with their partner, or they're getting bored with that, that just means you haven't been opening yourself up to receive the creativity. Because it's mm -hmm. a lot of creativity which can come in this experience, you know, from moment to moment, from experience, from experience to day to day. But you got to open yourself up to receive it. And if you get on board with this elevated level of soul sexing, mm -hmm. oh, your creativity is going to be limitless. Elevate. Believe me on that. Elevated. <laughs> it's going to be limitless. Raise, so let's, raise let's the roof. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's look at the activating the five senses. So this whole approach, um, and what I want to say is every encounter with your mate doesn't have to be a production, right? right. Every okay. encounter with your mate does not have to be a production, but the thing about it is you're kind of move with each other. You try to do different things. You, you, you're not going to do all these five things at a time, but the five senses that you want to activate and make sure that you're on point is, the one, the first one I want to talk about is the smell, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of us, we like to use scented candles. We like to use incense. Uh, we like to use uh, oils, different oils and stuff like that, that we may burn in the atmosphere to kind of activate our, our senses, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money. I mean, you can get stuff probably in your spice cabinet when you're talking about cinnamon and ginger and peppermint all of these in the in the atmosphere you know evokes different emotions and different um sensitivity mm -hmm. right in terms of in terms of smell but it won't you want it to be a pleasurable smelling thing because that also can uh, contributes to your arousal right um and you can do like i said you can you can boil some water and put some cinnamon in there and that's right. going to fill the atmosphere that's a very erotic type uh sense and it doesn't cost a lot of money either <laughs> um also too not just in the atmosphere but the smell of your mate mm -hmm. and the smell of you on your own body mm -hmm. you know i oh. i don't use a lot of uh uh, uh perfumes and stuff like that mm -hmm. i use a lot of scented oils because you know if you want someone to be kissing on your body or whatever you don't want them absorbing you know artificial flavors you know artificial you know, <laughs> people absorbing that kind of stuff right you right. want it to be natural you know so whatever scent you like mix it with a little coconut oil or mix it with a little mm -hmm. olive oil you know right. these yeah. are natural things so then that way your partner they're not taking in any artificial stuff into their into their body by you know, kissing on you or that type of thing, right? right, right. Also, so that's, that's also the thing in terms of smelling. In terms of our next sense is hearing, right? So what's going on in the environment? Um, are you playing music? And if you're not playing music, maybe you're in a very peaceful area. I live in a very peaceful area. It's very quiet at night. And you can just hear, you know, nature doing its work. And, and right. it's very peaceful. So if yeah. you're in an environment like that that's very peaceful, you can just, you can just, the, the music, the nature is your music, right? right? You don't necessarily have to put on any type of mood music. But if you want to, you could put on mood, mood, mood music. It could be <laughs> songs that you like, sounds that he like. It could just be natural sounds that you right. are. It you can know, be the sounds of each other. in this aspect, huh? Also, some people don't realize that the sounds of each other also bring Right, I was going to touch on that. Right. Yes, I know you Exactly. <laughs> the sounds of each other, you know, the words that you're saying e to each other, you know, the flirting that you're doing to each other. These are words, you know, the tone in which you say it, mm -hmm. you know, all of this is a, a way to arouse, you know, the auditory. 
right? right. You know, what you say, how you say it, you know what I mean? The tone right. of what you say, how sweet it is, how soft it is, how loud it is. All of this contributes, right. these are, the, it contributes to the sound, you know, mm -hmm. heavy breathing, you know, breathing mm -hmm. in the ear, slow breathing, fast breathing. All right. of these are sounds that can evoke different arousals in your right. mate and in yourself. So you want to think right. about that in terms of sounds, I mean, in terms of hearing. Mm -hmm. Then we have the, I did, a, I did, oh, the visual, mm -hmm. right? I forgot the visual. The visual, you know, not only in what you see in your environment, but what do you have on? Ladies, <laughs> men, what do you have on? You know, uh, and, and when you start the foreplay, you want, might want to have on something sexy. You know, if you have on a long white see-through gown with different flowers on it, that's going to evoke a different um, reaction from your mate than if you got on stilettos and then you got on a garter belt. You know, so <laughs> different, your, right. the way you present yourself to the experience is going to evoke a different reaction from your mate, right? right? right. And that also depends on what they're into. So tonight, baby, you know, we might be dressing up as the waitress. You see what I'm right. saying? Or tonight, no, we're gonna be we're gonna be the soft one out in the Garden of Eden. Right. You know what I'm saying so. There's different visuals in terms of how you present yourself and your mate as well. This doesn't let him off the hook if he's a man. You right. Know what I mean? You might respond to him differently when he got on them bicycle shorts, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or the tiny whiteies. I don't like the tiny whiteies. You know. Right. I don't Some either. people might like them. Right. People might like them, you know what I mean? Or when he just has on a nice uh, um, gray silk shirt this long and nothing else. You know, that may exude a different type of thing. So you can also get... And when he's been working out. Yes, when he's been working out. And, just and his, his body looks fit. <laughs> yes. Some people exactly. like the other body. But you know, all of that, the body he type. The other body. <laughs> right, all of that. <laughs> and, and, and keep in mind, ladies, this comes with knowing your partner and knowing yourself because right. keep in mind, some people really like a guy that's really big and buffed and everything is cut. I don't necessarily I don't like, like that, that. Right? Mm -hmm. But some people do. Some right. people do. So if you have a mate, if you yourself like that, you need to let your mate know that, right? right. Some people just like a little tone and that's good enough for them. That's just enough to turn them on right there. So, right. It's also about know, knowing the visual of that and then the visual of your space too, right? right. Because certain colors exhibit, um, exhibit certain moods. Right. Blues have a more calming, soothing, blue and whites have a more calming, soothing mood, right? But if you got red and orange, that's putting the fire up under you a little bit. You know right. what I mean? So all of this create is visual stuff that you can do in, in your environment and in yourself to mm -hmm. to invoke different moods and different right. energy that you get flowing lights okay. on lights off what'd you say <laughs> lights, on, lights, lights on lights off lights on lights off Light, lights dimmed a little bit right you know sometimes people like them dimmed a little bit um the other thing is touch and, uh, and naima talked a lot about this when she talked about the erotic zones but just this whole idea of touching you know, you don't always have to go to, a lot of people get so comfortable, they just want to go to that one part and that's it. Right. You know, no, there's different types, you know, touching, scratching the guy's head sometimes, you know, rubbing his ear down there and vice versa. You know, the nipples of a man, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That, you know, so discover these different touch modes with your man and y'all can discover this uh, together. That's one aspect. And then our last aspect, which we kind of touched on a little bit too, since was taste right right so you get taste in the sense of not just you know when you kissing your 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 um your maid or or um licking your maid and all this other kind of stuff it's not also what you have on your skin but it's also the the fluids mm -hmm. that you have in your body and that goes back to diet right mm -hmm. so if you if you eat meat a lot if you're a heavy meat eater Right. Not, your fluids are going to have a certain type of taste. Meaty. Right? <laughs> they have a certain type of taste to them, and they're going to have a certain type of smell to it, right? right. And not only right. just through the liquids itself, if you're kissing someone or the liquids that, that are released, but also through what's exhibited through your pores of your right. skin and how you taste when you sweat. 
Yeah. If, you, if you have more vegetables and more fruits in your diet, yeah. and you might taste a little sweeter. That sweat is going to taste a little sweeter. That kiss is going to taste a little sweeter. You know what I mean? When you get pineapples and right. watermelon and cherries and all mm. that, you have a heavy dose of that in your diet. And lemon, you know, all of that um, adds to it, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, and t t towards the taste of it all, mm -hmm. you know, and tasting your mate. And, and keep in mind, dairy is not very good. Especially for us as black folk, dairy is not very good. It's so really you not. really want yeah, to really. reduce the amount of dairy that's in your diet. And there are so many great dairy substitutes now. Right. In terms of made with almond milk, made with soy, made with coconut oil. I'm Rice telling you. And, and I'm talking about the regular grocery store. I'm not even mm -hmm. talking about you have to go to a health food store or the farmer's right. market. I mean, right. you can, but I know like in Publix, and in, in some Kroger's, I get my yogurt from there or, or whipped cream. A lot of us like whipped cream. They make that with coconut oil and that kind of stuff. So yeah. all I'm saying is stay away from the dairy because the dairy creates a lot of mucus in the body. Right. And it also creates, you know, the, the taste mm -hmm. of the mucus and all other kind of stuff, you know, so when we're talking about taste. Mm -hmm. So that's just different ways to activate your senses to be able to elevate this whole experience and also to add variety to the experience spice mm -hmm. up the experience you know we go oh baby you know we want to get together later so you might i need i need you to drink this pineapple juice i need you to eat right. some of this watermelon <laughs> you know what i mean right so right. that tonight when we get it all it's gonna be real right. tasty up in here right you know that type of thing so those are just some of the things that we can use to activate our senses to elevate us in this soul sexing experience and our final area that we got to touch on, right, is the spiritual. Hallelujah. Spirit, right? <laughs> so, Nefertiri, you want to tell us a little bit about getting your spirit right and soul sexing? Absolutely. So, first, I want to say thank you all for sharing on the biology, the mental status, and then those five senses. And, of course, we definitely need to have the spiritual. You know, when you think about spiritual, it's like elevating the experience as we've been talking about to a whole nother level, not just right. from a physical point of view. And right. so when I think about the spiritual, it just makes me think about the souls of the man and the woman coming together when you think about marriage. So when we think about marriage and connecting them and uniting them as one, so when we're in that act, it's very similar. It's like in that, in that time, it's like you're coming together. And so it's like true intimacy. So it, it like feels and revives and it like heals the soul right. uh, when you can come together and actually connect where it's not just about sex, but it's the intimacy part of it. And so some people can have like sex without the intimacy, but it's like, or being able to have sex without having, you know, all the other extra, but they're not really truly connecting. So being able to connect spiritually is like very important, especially for couples, you know, um, we like to think that only married people are doing this, but <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, but intimacy is a feeling of very intense closeness, you know, emotionally. And, and it's like, when you think about the things that you do prior to getting to that moment, mm -hmm. there are things that you do outside, like some of the things that you mentioned, you guys mentioned earlier on, before you even get to that point. So right. whether it's an act, whether it's a word, um, whatever, it's something that's getting you ready. Like, you know, when you, when you talk about that foreplay, it's like it comes way before you even get to the bedroom or the living right. room or the kitchen or wherever you're at. <laughs> right. And so, um, but doing that and also thinking about how your souls connect even in the prayer. So, um, so calling on a lot, you know, and then there's like blessings that we actually get that we receive when we are in that act. So exactly. it's like Allah created us in this way to where we even receive blessings just, you know, from doing the act itself and then being something that we really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So um, if we don't do this, sometimes it can create barriers, you know, between the couples and all of that. So you want to be able to do things like looking into each other's eyes, you mm -hmm. know, opening up to them, being able to see into them. Because a lot of times when this act happens, it's like, you know, the lights are out or, you know, they're real dim, but you know, like you said, don't have to be that all the time, but just being able to connect with one another, you know, occasionally where you can see your face and you can see or you can see what you're thinking or feeling or like you spoke on earlier, just like talking to each other, kind of community, communicating right. in a way. 
So it's like seeing your soul, but I kind of want to go down a list of like other things with your soul. So feeling, feeling the soul, mm -hmm. touching the soul, like hearing, like in a way where that energy, where you're able to be able to connect and feel that way, uh, tasting the soul or just knowing, just knowing your own soul and knowing what it is that you want and being able to transfer that over to the other one, exciting your soul. So it's like, you know, bringing that, bringing that extra bang to it, you know, having uh, the experience for your soul creating that and so kissing the soul and just making love to the soul so we want to make sure that we are able to just give the the soul everything that we can spiritually right. being able to connect that so one of the other things you know even though i like spoke about um this is something i heard but i actually haven't done this done this yet but when we talk about when i talk about the lighting and all of that but it's like mm -hmm. blindfolding each other right. and so that like kind of connects you in a way where you're having to trust the mate like right. whatever it is it's doing so that's kind of like a good practice you know i read that like not long ago and i was like that's kind of cool a good idea so that kind of reminds me of that so i think that you can definitely like connect with someone when you're trying to think you know you're putting your trust in this person or whatever it is that's going on so that's what i got for y'all on a spiritual level so we want to definitely you know include that in there it's a very right. important piece and part and so it definitely connects us in a way where it's not just about the about the sex act itself but you know the intimacy and connecting and, and increasing the spirit the spirit and the soul and just for, and, and actually you know i mentioned prayer earlier but being able to um to pray before and after and all that because some people like even when you think about trying to conceive a child like if you like pray for a certain thing or do a thing a certain way it's like you know you can be blessed by a lot to get this whatever it is that you're praying for during that time and during that act so it just kind of like takes it to a whole nother level outside of yeah. just two people getting together yes. you know? right awesome and yes definitely from that spiritual level and also too in terms of really evoking it with each other you mm -hmm. know the one thing i love about islam is this idea of one mm -hmm. right one God, one creation, we're all created, you know, mm -hmm. so when you are praying together, right, and you're praying for your mate, and you're praying for yourself, you're praying for this idea of being open to receive this union, to, to elevate our souls until we become one in this one soul union for this certain period of time, and we're all created, so from a spiritual perspective, you're praying for that. You're praying for your mm -hmm. mate to be open right. to the experience, to be open to the trust, to mm -hmm. the freedom of what's about to transpire. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To be free Absolutely. up. Because really, when you're in this elevator, it's the ultimate free experience. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's all a spiritual experience. So you should bring your God, God into your bedroom or into this mm -hmm. experience you should evoke god's name with this experience you know to open the mm -hmm. whole experience up right. from a spiritual and the connection of the soul you have to evoke god's name in this not just to say it but to evoke all that energy in oneness you bringing it all together in one so mm -hmm. i'm that's that's what i really think about and that's and you explain so much of it so beautifully and and that's my little contribution to the spirituality thing. Anybody else want to talk about that? So appreciate that. Yep. And you know, I think that also we should probably try to uh, put another spin or another angle on it when we're talking about um, you know uh, having you know of course always bringing God into the situation. I think that people forget that or or they they sometimes think that God and sex shouldn't be in the same sentence, right? Right, right? But it's really God consciousness, meaning mm -hmm. that even in the act through creativity, through love, through the right. experience, through foreplay, that you're doing something that has a sense of, man, God created this and this is what right. he wants right. us to be able to to receive from one another in a pleasurable way, right? right. Mm -hmm. And even through creativity, knowing that you're not just uh, taking it way to the extreme right taking away to the stream so I, I think that also inside of um having these um physical acts with one another uh people think that there's no limit right yeah. like i can just go all the way to the left with my spouse because we're married 
Right. But understanding that there are still limits inside of that. Not yeah. that there are certain things. That, well, no. Yeah, there, there are certain things <laughs> that you can't do, right? right? And understanding that, but knowing that if you're if you're starting off with the God consciousness, right, and and invoking God's name before any, if you can say Bismillah before mm -hmm. you do whatever, anything mm -hmm. thereafter mm -hmm. should be purified, right? Mm -hmm. But if you say bit and then you don't know, I don't want to say Bismillah because I'm about to have you. <laughs> If you're questionable as to what you're going to do afterwards, that should be your first sign that you may or may not be able to, <laughs> that you may or may not be, be doing that particular thing, right? right? Because we know that everything that is lawful by God, you should be able to start off with Bismillah or with God's name or, you know, in the name of God, right? Everything that is lawful, we should be able to start that off with. And so making sure that even in creativity, that we're able to say that, do that, and be that. And mm -hmm. that it is okay that God is present during this sexual act. Because right. he's present during this sexual act. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. right. So I just want to thank, uh, I want to thank my co-host today. I love this topic, Soul Section. And of course, we just scratched the surface. And um, for all of you all who's out there, uh, you know, because I am an attorney who's thinking about um, copywriting um, this term, I've already put in my application for this term of soul sex. <laughs> make sure that you don't try to steal it, but um, okay. make sure you don't try to steal it. However, but I do want to say that, you know, I hope that I hope that Crown Nation, our viewers can take some of the information that we've have here in order to, to bring it back to your experience with your mate to make it a much more um, um, uh, elevated experience, enjoyable experience, mm -hmm. bringing more creativity to it. I mean, of course we could do days and days and weeks and weeks on all and go real deep on all those different aspects, but we were just trying to give you a taste of it and put out here uh, uh, our, our uh, conversation mm -hmm. and elevate the conversation so people can get back to love making, get back to soul sexing get back to elevating this in the conversation so we don't get lost in a lot of this animalistic language that's put out in the media, mm -hmm. right? So right, right. Um, we talked about right. today about knowing your body from a physiological standpoint, checking mm -hmm. your attitude, what is your mental state like and how you approach the experience and what you think about the experience and mm -hmm. how to put yourself in different mental states mm -hmm. to evoke a different reaction from your mate. We talked about that. We talked about activating the five senses, mm -hmm. you know, your sense of sight, your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sense of hearing, right? And your sense of touch, how you can use your five senses and activate different aspects of that to contribute to the elevation of the experience, right? And lastly, we talked about spiritual reality, you know, mm -hmm. and we talked about it last, not because we're putting it last, but because we want that to be the last thing, which is the first thing on your mind when you take it back, right. you know, because that really is the ultimate goal that you want to reach to is this spiritual, soulful union in one at this elevated level. So right. I hope that you have enjoyed this experience that we have given you from Rock the Crown. Yes. And we hope that you go back and use it with your mate yes. and give us some feedback and tell us about it, you know. You could probably do something anonymously, anonymously yeah. if you want to send us some, if you don't want us to know who you are. But right. we would like to know your comments and know also, too, if you would like us to go deeper into a particular aspect of that, uh, let us know that as well. Right. And we are going to conclude this episode with, yeah, make sure you elevate and get some good soul sex. And mm -hmm. See you next time. On don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to right. Facebook and Instagram. look it up on Instagram and Twitter. We'll see you all next time. Peace out. Yes. All, all right. right. Crown. Crown Nation. <laughs>